welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, my name is Lorena Aguirre, and I post here on my YouTube channel every Monday and Saturday, but unfortunately, I am going to be cutting down my days just for the meantime, just because I do have a lot of work that we have to do with our new house that we got, and we're trying to get all settled in and things like that, and we are in the process of starting to renovate our restroom, and it is just a lot going on. I'm thinking about maybe adding that to like my TikTok and things like that. So if you guys would like to see that, make sure to stay tuned for that. Or maybe I'll even post it on my Instagram stories. I feel like Instagram will be easier. I don't know why, but TikTok won't let me make another personal account. It only lets me have two accounts and I need a total of three. So honestly, I don't know how to do that. So if you guys know how to do that, please let me know. Um, Cause I tried everything and nothing works, but um yeah so you guys are going to see right here i have my lovely client this is a client that has been coming to me for a very long time and we needed to go ahead and give her another full set she had came in with only one nail on um usually she goes like a month a month and a half and i think this time she might have gone two months but she only had her thumbnail on and so we ended up having to take that off and now we are going to go ahead and put her tips on. I am using Nail Essential Tips. If you guys don't know, Nails by Chico. I do have a, an unboxing on my YouTube channel if you guys are interested in that. And seeing what I got and how I like them and how they performed. Um, you guys will be able to be the judge of that. And see if you guys will also like to purchase that. Because I know there is hardly any videos on that. But... Yeah, so definitely recommend checking that out. So far, I am loving the tips. I've been using them, gosh, I've been using them a lot. Um, I don't even know how many clients I've used them on, but every time I use them, I love them. I feel like the, the for square nails, I do feel like it keeps it nice and square and pretty. And yeah, so definitely recommend. I am going to go ahead and blend the tips. I am using that same fine sanding band that I did for the cuticle or like to prep the nail i am using that same one to blend the nail tip in i am not touching her natural nail i am just blending in the nail enhancement without touching the natural nail because i don't want to end up thinning out her natural nail now i'm going to go ahead and size the tip i know you guys are going to ask me why haven't i got the magnet and tried that yet or get those special tip cutters that do the sizes for you but you guys I just anytime I'm on Amazon I really never think of that so <laughs> I just haven't went in and got them I do feel like it would cut down my time tremendously so I feel like I should just like get them but yeah I just haven't <laughs> I promise hopefully maybe one day I will but so far it's I still don't even have them in my cart so <laughs> but Right now, I am going to go ahead and dehydrate the nails. I'm going to do that twice, and I'm going to prime twice. The dehydrator I love to use is from OPI, and then my primer that I like to use is from Young Nail. This stuff is thebomb.com. This is great for doing nail, any type of nail enhancement that you do. I definitely recommend this, whether if you're putting on press on nails or anything like that. This combo is great to have. If you guys need to find it or are having a problem finding it, I do have them linked on my Amazon storefront, which you'll be able to find down in the description box down below. So now I went ahead and got my swatches, let her pick out the ones that she wanted. And we're going in with Not Polish number 18. And this is a part of their nude collection. And I really, really love this color. If you guys want a video on this nude collection, I do have swatches and everything on that. So you guys are able to see it to see if that nude collection is something that you would like to purchase. Um, but yeah, I do feel like I was trying to find videos on that and also they didn't have a lot of videos on that so I was like you know what I feel like I need to make that just to see if just to help somebody else so if they feel like it's worth it for them to buy it or if it's worth it for them just to buy all the colors separate so this is one of my most used colors and I do end up having another one um, I 
forget what it is called, but it is my client's favorite. This one and the other one, but it is a very, very light, light, light pink color. It is a very pretty color. So I am in the market to shop different acrylic lines. So if you guys do recommend one that you feel like is super buttery and has amazing colors for nude colors and those trendy pink, um, kind of like, almost looks like a jelly color, but I've seen people do French tips with those and I think they look so cute. But I'm going to go ahead and keep on cutting in that acrylic. The size of brush that I am using is a size 16. This is great. Um, honestly, I started out with a very, very small brush when I was a beginner and I wish I would have started out larger and kind of went from there. Just because I do feel like larger brushes help me move a lot quicker, I'm able to smooth it out faster. And with a smaller brush, you're working with way smaller beads. So of course, you're going to end up doing, for like this length of nail, you're, you might end up doing like a six bead nail just on this one. And I mean, don't get me wrong, if that ends up being faster than you, then filing, then by all means, do your thing. But I do feel like for me, uh, being able to put it down and I file faster than putting it down. So I feel like for me, using a larger brush, it really, really helped with my technique and being able to get clients in and out in a faster amount of time. So uh, something that I do want to mention is when you guys are working with an acrylic brush, it is really important to know your parts of the brush. So the tip of the brush is what you pick up the bead with. The belly of the brush is kind of that middle part of the brush and you are able to pat down with that. So I like to press my bead down with the tip of the brush and start patting and swiping it down. I know some people they don't feel like you should swipe down but I kind of use a mixture of motions. So you guys will see I am patting it from side to side and then I am patting it, patting it, bringing it down and then I am starting to swipe a little bit now that I'm getting more towards the edge of the nail. If I do feel like there is not enough acrylic at the edge of this nail, I'm going to go ahead and go in with another bead of acrylic. But I like to wipe the sides. Wiping the sides definitely help keep that shape. And you guys will see I am putting that bead on the edge of the nail and I am just going to go ahead and blend it up. And then the stuff that I feel like it was too much of a bulk, I'm going to bring it back down and wipe it off just so the nail doesn't end up having like an, a tremendous add of thickness on there. And I'm going to go ahead and go in with my cuticle bead. This one I did do fairly large just because I did want to add to my apex. And then I'm going to go ahead and start to kind of blend that down more. And then the excess, I am just going to go ahead and tap that off, clean underneath, and I'm just going to go ahead and do that same thing that I did on that nail. I'm going to be doing that on the thumbnail. Thumbnails I do feel like are easier for me because it's not as small and tedious, I feel like. Um, so I do feel like this tends to be easier for me. Um, sometimes I do feel like on the other nails I underestimate how big they are or how small they are, and I end up picking up too small of a bead for certain nails and things like that. And if you guys do feel like you've picked up too large of a bead or too small of a bead or too wet of a bead or too dry of a bead, it's, I feel like it is best to kind of just end up getting rid of them and kind of starting over if you need to, just so then you don't end up having like such a, a really, really big bead. If you do have a very, very wet bead, something you could do is drain the bead of acrylic. And what that is, is... You have the bead still on one side of the brush, and on the opposite side of the brush, you're going to dab that on the back of the paper. But I don't recommend doing too much because it will end up creating a really, really dry bead. So I would definitely just tap once and kind of go from there and see if you need to tap again. Now I'm going to go ahead and go in with my Adoro files. These things are pretty good for their price point. I am super happy with this purchase. I haven't used these in a while. I feel like, um, so honestly, using them in this video, I was super happy with them. I cannot wait to find them again in store. I do feel like sometimes at some nail supply stores, I feel like a lot of times I could find things and then I go back and I never find them again. So 
I do feel like with Adoro files, I do feel like I do tend to see them more in a lot of different stores. So hopefully I'll be able to find them. My favorite files right now are the montage ones, but I feel like for the price point for me, and especially having to completely, uh, I don't know, just throw them away and stuff, it just, right now I'm just trying to save money in all honesty, but if you are doing super, super, super long nails, and that is mainly your client base, I highly recommend to try those out, just because the file on them does not wear out fast. The file lasts a really long time, but right now, your girl is trying to save money. Renovating a house is not cheap by any means. So any money that I could save, I am definitely trying to do so um, just in general with my life stuff. If I could, if as long as what I am saving my money on doesn't compromise any of my work, of course, like I end up just using that. But I do feel like I've been having good experience with this. I do feel like um the scratches on this one having to buff them out i do feel like i end up having to put a little bit more elbow grease in there though but i mean that is like the only con of working with these i know some of you guys might say like well why not just work with a softer file but it's just because i do feel like the softer files they do tend to dull faster i did work with 100 grit with montage but normally I do end up sticking to 80 80 grit with a lot of other brands just because I do feel like the more coarse they are the more I'm able to get done before they wear out because a lot of files they actually wear out very very fast but I do feel like with montage I was able to do the 100 grit and still have a very strong file by the end of the service so but unfortunately I don't I don't like to keep any baggies of clients um, nails and stuff and it's not recommended or it's not it's something against state board rules so of course even though um, a lot of people do it I just don't feel like I want to do that I don't feel like it's worth doing that just due to um, cleanliness and things like that I know they say like well it's in a bag and stuff and I just I'm always so afraid of cross-contamination and things like that so yeah that's pretty much my spiel on that but I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm just going to go ahead and file. I am using that same fine sanding down and I am just going around the cuticle and then blending whatever else I feel like needs to be blended. And then I have been going underneath the nails too to help like kind of clean up a little bit of acrylic or kind of just even thinning out the nails and giving a thinner look. I've been seeing that, a lot of nail techs do that, and I've actually been really loving the look of that. So of course, I wanted to try it. So, and I actually really love the look of it. I feel like it gives a nice, thin, clean look. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my buffer. And I went ahead and buffed her other hand off camera, but now I'm gonna go ahead and just get this and making sure that I take out all of those scratches and once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and go in with a matte top coat. Basically what the matte top coat is going to do is help smooth everything. So the gel paint that I use doesn't end up settling in the cracks of the nails and kind of messing up my design. So just a little tip for you guys if you guys haven't already. Any hand painted stuff, I definitely recommend putting that matte top coat down first, almost like as a base coat. And then going on from there. I'm going to go ahead and get my Kiara Sky Lamp. I'm going to put that on and I'm going to put it for the 60 seconds. All right, now it's time for the French tip, and there's a couple different methods that I like to use with this French tip. Is kind of just free drawing the lines, and then going in with the bigger brush and filling it all in. I do feel like that helps make it a little bit faster for me, but I do feel like I um I need to kind of raise it up a tiny bit, and I like to kind of step away from my work and see it from a distance. 
and then go back in and kind of smooth things out with the liner brush. The liner brush that I am using is Opulence Nail Co. And then I am going to go ahead and go in and line the sides and then go in and bring the, those pieces together. And then just go ahead and fill that in. I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of the nails. I'm going to let you guys watch me work my magic. And let me know what your favorite method is when you guys are doing French tips. I know a lot of people, they like that A method. You might even end up seeing me doing that in here. So sometimes I like to play around and try different ones while I'm working. So let me know what you guys think on which ones you like to try. And yeah. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and top coat. I am using Colorline Gel. This one is the bomb. It is a non-yellowing top coat, but since it dries super, super smooth with a no-stick layer, I do feel like there is nothing for chrome to grab onto. So if you guys are trying to use this for chrome, I definitely don't recommend um, because you guys aren't gonna get nowhere with it. But I do really love this top coat overall. I feel like it is a really, really good brand of top coat. And even just her products alone, I love her products. Um, definitely need to purchase a few of my staple products from her again. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and top coat the rest of you guys. And I will show you guys the final look. I hope you guys really enjoyed today's video. And 
hope any of the tips that I have given you throughout this video have helped you or inspired you. So please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll be back with more videos. Bye!